It's that time again, sports fans. Spring training is getting started for baseball teams all across the country. But I have one question for you, Lakeland. Are you ready for some indoor football? The Lakeland Raiders, a brand new team in the Ultimate Indoor Football League, are getting ready for their big debut on March 10th against the Rome Rampage. This is the first time Lakeland has had an indoor football team since the previous team, the Thunderbolts, folded in 2007. Home games will be played at the Lakeland Center under the supervision of head coach, general manager, and co-owner Michael Mink. I think we're going to be the hardest working team out there in the league. Um, we've been doing two-a-days on the weekends and um, practicing during the week. We're also at TBC 24 Fitness. We've been doing extremes like yoga. You know, we're doing all the drills you have to do, and, and, but we're doing a lot of conditioning. Our main focus is on trying to keep the guys healthy and trying to get them in real good shape. That way we go, you know, we, we eliminate our injuries during the year. Players are practicing at Mulberry Park to get ready for all the action against their rivals. With seven home games now through June 2nd, players have to be physically and mentally prepared for their debut season. You know, probably for the next two to three years we should have championships because, I mean, we have the potential. We have too many guys that's out here that, you know, need to be at the next level. And this being a pro professional program, it's going to be awesome. You know, everybody come here with the same attitude, ready to work, um, get down to business. And we got the same goal in mind, which is win the championship. So. I think that we already, you know, pushing real hard to become a premier team in, in, in this league right here we're in. And, um, you know, Coach Meek, you know, Coach Bingo, Coach JJ, all those guys are, are, are experienced. So, you know, just instilling all that experience all into one big bomb. And we should take off and blow up pretty well this year. We have a few guys that should be in the NFL right now out here um, that are just as good. All of our games are recorded or videoed, so now scouts, coaches can get an opportunity to look at them. Uh, in my history with this, I've been doing this for a long time, I know about 60 players that have gone from this level making $100 a game to the NFL signing multi-million dollar contracts. Raiders tickets start at $12 for adults and $7 for children. Don't miss their first game on March 10th when the invasion begins. We're the Polk County's team, Polk County's pro team. We're professional. These guys are good athletes. They need your support out there. You know, they need your cheering. You know, they're trying to bring a championship to Lakeland and, and become the pride of Lakeland. You're extremely close to the action. One thing that we'll tell everybody, you have to be awake all the time because you're going to catch a football. If you catch one of our players, if they jump in the stand, put them back nicely. If it's the opponent, we'll turn our back. But hopefully everybody will get to one of our games. Go Raiders. Hope to see everybody there. Now I'm going to go practice with the team. Uh, no, you're not. At least I get to watch them practice. Lauren Reynolds, TSC News. Being a teenager in today's fast-paced world is not easy. Some of the top problems facing teens include time management, body image, depression, high expectations from parents, peer pressure to try sex, drugs, or alcohol, bullying, broken homes, and the shifting economy. While navigating through various changes and discoveries, a July 2011 study out of UCLA finds that one aspect of a teen's life stays the same, religion. According to research by the National Study on Youth and Religion, 80% of American teenagers between the ages of 13 and 17 classify themselves as religious individuals. More than half of American youth participate in religious youth group activities. These youth groups add an element of fun to religion, but are also a way to help lay foundations of faith in today's busy teens. As a teenager, you face a lot of temptations and you're going to have friends in every group trying to pull you different ways and being a Christian and having Jesus in your heart can help you to steer away from those things and it can just definitely keep you safe from those temptations. One thing youth groups do well is to make religion more attractive to today's teenagers. Games, mission trips, and Bible studies are often done in a fun way using media and technology in creative ways to attract teens to the youth program. My youth group makes lessons more relatable by providing, uh, I guess, examples that relate to me, things that matter to me and are relevant to my life, um, and by also using vocabulary that's on my level. I know when I hear a preacher that is talking over my head, I start to zone out, but youth group, they're, they're speaking to me and speaking for me, like they care about me. My youth group makes lessons more relatable by simplifying the Bible down to words that teenagers don't understand. Right now we're seeing the effects of technology trickle down and it's more accessible to our younger students than ever before. Um, so there is a, uh, a greater desire for more of an entertainment aspect, even into the services, um, lights, technology has to continue to be ever-changing with our, the attention span of our students. 
Teens who are involved in the youth group are more likely to pray, read their Bibles, and share their faith with others. These youth groups give them the opportunity for self-exploration, discussing values, and figuring out where they fit in. With religion being taken out of public schools, youth groups are an important way to reach today's young believers. I feel like it, it's very important because when, especially if you go to public school, there's a lot of bad influences. If you don't have a spiritual foundation, a place that you can come and get built up with your peers and people your age, you lose that. And I think for a teenager in high school and going to youth group, it's very, it's vital. It helps me cope and it helps me just know who I am and it just makes me an all-around better person and it helps to know that I'm not alone. A February 2011 Group Magazine report found that religion creates positive outcomes for teens, such as increased physical health, a longer lifespan, greater friendship support, a healthier family relationship, and a reduction of depression. Youth groups are also a safe place for teens to talk about topics they aren't comfortable talking about at home. In addition, teens who attend youth group have a stronger moral backbone, according to a report by the National Study on Youth and Religion. Who your child hangs out with affects um, their beliefs and so that's why you try to get them in with a group who has the same beliefs and values that you do so that they'll make the right choices. My belief in God helps me be a teenager knowing that there are morals that I should live by and that somebody wants something good for me and I shouldn't just do whatever I want. Teens who consider religion to be an important part of their lives are less likely to smoke, drink alcohol, or use drugs, according to a report in an issue of Psychology of Addictive Behaviors. Me and my friends can just hang out and we can learn about Jesus and we can grow together and we can learn from each other and learn from our leaders who are always there to pour into our lives. The routine and consistency of a weekly youth group meeting is something today's teens need to help guide them through the adolescent years. C.R. Lauren Brown, TSC News. Artists for the first ever Chalk for Charity event were Up With The Sun, getting started on their intricate creations. Using chalk and liquid tempera, they transformed Lemon Street into a full-size art display. Business sponsors were able to purchase a canvas size of either 4x4 for $200, 7x7 for $300, or 10x10 for $500. The sponsors then brought an artist with them or were assigned a volunteer artist to create a work of art. I'm taking part in this event because I'm an employee at Brook Pottery downtown and it's always a great opportunity to get out and show your support for our town and to have a great time with other artists. I really like doing charity work so it makes me happy that I'm doing it. Everyone could cast votes for their favorite artist by purchasing tokens and putting them in that artist's container. Children could join in the fun if their parents purchased a mini square. They even got to keep the chalk. I drew um, a picture of um, my grandpa. That he's in heaven right now. Um, I drew like um, him standing right on a like standing right next to the table with um, a vase full of flowers and a window right next to him that's showing like all clouds in the sun. The money from this year's Chalk for Charity event will be donated to Lakeland Knights of Columbus Global Wheelchair Mission and the Lakeland Citizens Police Academy Alumni Association. The Global Wheelchair Mission donates wheelchairs to those in need and since 2003 over 20,000 wheelchairs have been donated. We're, uh, we purchase these wheelchairs for both in the United States and outside the United States. They have a pretty lofty goal of providing everyone on earth a wheelchair that needs one and can't afford one. My favorite part about the day so far is um, just hearing the music in the background, having a good time, painting, and seeing everyone else's work. We definitely will be doing it next year. As a matter of fact, we're already locking in the uh, first Saturday of every year on, in February. The first Saturday in February is going to be our day. So yeah, we're going to keep doing this because it's, uh, it's great for Lakeland and it's great for our uh, organizations. Businesses were very excited about this year's Chalk for Charity event and hope that it will become an annual tradition. Lauren Reynolds, TSC News. Lauren! Oh, um, hey Shelby, I was just researching the dancing. Mm -hmm. Does any of this research have anything to do with that cute boy you were talking to earlier? Uh, no, of, of course not. But you know, I have some really great information for you guys. Take it away, Lauren. The 13th annual Hispanic Heritage Festival is a great day to come out and enjoy all of Central Florida's Hispanic cultures. This year's theme is many backgrounds, many stories, one American spirit. 
Lakeland's beautiful Lake Mirror was the backdrop for this year's Hispanic Heritage Festival, but there's not much time to admire the view when you're surrounded by the sights and sounds of the festival. Sponsored by the Hispanic Club of Polk County, this year's event had over 96 vendors that showcased the many Hispanic cultures of Florida. The purpose of this event was to award college scholarships to students from this area. The money was raised by securing corporate sponsorships and by selling food and beverages to the enormous crowd. What I like most about the festival is Zumba and the food. I really love dancing to the Hispanic music. My favorite thing of the Hispanic Heritage Festival is the food. Although the foods and music were extremely popular, there were lots of other things to do. There was a parade of flags led by Miss Polk Latina contestants, followed by the Lakeland High School marching band. A petting zoo featuring Jose the Kissing Llama and horse rides was a huge hit with young and old alike. Spanish dancers, Zumba routines, and musical guests kept everyone entertained. This festival allows Hispanic cultures to show off their crafts, food, and more. Lauren Reynolds, TSC News. Where's the best place in Lakeland for a scarecrow like me to hang out? Is it that way, or is it that way? I think maybe it's right here at the Corn Fusion Corn Maze on Moore Road. This place has been completely transformed into a full-size, Polk County-themed corn maze. The corn stalks are about eight feet tall, making it challenging, yet fun. On the owner's farm, they usually raise cattle and grow sod and olives. But this year, due to economic hardship, they decided to mix it up to get them back on their feet. The maze idea came from a friend who also owns a farm. He uh, mentioned it to me and then myself and my wife went to a convention and got hooked up with a company out of Utah and then we started putting it together after that. We planted the corn in uh, I think the last of July, the last week of July. So that's when it was planted. And so we've been working on it pretty much ever since then, you know, just to build the different structures and put everything together. But that's not all this event has to offer. It also includes a corn box, a corn cannon, mini mazes for the little ones, a hay ride, a pumpkin patch, and would you believe there's more? My favorite thing was the corn maze because I've never done like I've never done anything like it before and it was interesting. I like the corn maze because it was fun and tricky. I like playing in it. It's the first time I ever shot a cannon, even though they didn't have real corn. Well, you have to keep looking for something. This will help generate some money to keep the farm and the ranch in the same family for years to come, hopefully. It will be open Friday from 2 to 8 p.m., Saturday from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m., and Sunday from 12 to 8 p.m. Admission prices are $10 for adults, $8 for children ages 5 to 10, and 4 and under are free. For more information, visit www.themaze.com. Did you know that corn is produced on every single continent except Antarctica. Boy, I would have a hard time getting a job there, but since I'm here, I've got a job to do. I've got to go find the hot spot for crows to hang around in these parts. I'm about to get my scare on. My scare crow, that is. Scarecrow Lauren, TSZ News. Believe it or not, robots have been around for centuries. We can be dated back to the Greeks, but the first industrialized robot did not surface until the 1970s. We have now cutting edge technology due to many years of trial and error. Mrs. Cooper's critical thinking class has put their thinking cap on and created robots that were helpful to humans. The robot assignment was a fun way for the student to review a science skill of uh, following the scientific method while creating a piece of technology that would allow them to help somebody have a better holiday, a happier holiday. My robot is based on a, a peppermint dispenser and a cleaning room robot. Me and my stepdad were trying to find different parts about um, for our project and it was fun trying to pick out the different size um, um, pipes and tubes and everything to make the arms and the legs. I learned about a lot about pollution because when I was trying to create the idea of the robot, it taught me about the BP oil spill and I dug deep into the situation and I learned a lot about saving our environment and helping others. Robots are very helpful to us because they can take the place of humans in dangerous situations. 
such as navigating through smoke in a fire, cleaning asbestos from pipes, and lifting heavy items. Mrs. Cooper's class had a lot of fun creating their robots and learned a lot about their prototypes. Hunter Cowper, TSZ News. After several years of sluggish growth, North Lakeland is finally experiencing an upswing in business growth. Highway 98 has experienced a major transition, including upgrades in retail and transportation. If you haven't noticed, new businesses are beginning to take the place of empty lots that scatter the highway. Longhorn Steakhouse, GFS Marketplace, and Big Lots are only the beginning. A spokeswoman for Longhorn Steakhouse says that their location at Lakeside Village was doing so well that they had to look for a second location here in North Lakeland. She also added that it was the obvious choice since it's conveniently located near I-4. Chick-fil-A plans to keep their busy location inside Lakeland Square Mall and add a new freestanding location here, which used to be Barnes Noble Booksellers. In addition, a new outdoor upscale mall is expected to be built here across the street from Lakeland Square Mall. It will be called Gateway Commons and include a Kohl's, Dick's Sporting Goods, and PetSmart. The critical issue with business growth is location, and Highway 98 has proved itself worthy for all types of businesses. Beefo Brady's on 98 North recently renovated their restaurant. They completely changed the exterior, adding more outdoor seating and televisions for keeping up with various sporting events. Some of the signs we've seen is uh, different restaurants opening up with Longhorn Steakhouse opening up now, Chick-fil-A coming soon, uh, a new mall being built soon. So there's a lot more traffic that's going to be coming through this area of town and we're going to see a definite plus from that. I am so excited about the new mall they're building. I'm really glad that they're about to built a, a Chick-fil-A where Barnes & Noble used to be. I really like the other Longhorn on the other side of town, but I'm glad they built one over here. Before there was just a Kmart where Beefs is at and, and Best Buy. Before that there was absolutely nothing. Well, more has grown now, so we're seeing a lot more traffic and everything, so it does help benefit. Both the City of Lakeland and Highway 98 have benefited from our economy that is growing stronger every day. Businesses old and new have faith in 2012. Another upcoming project that will make North Lakeland even more accessible is the widening of Kathleen Road. Lauren Reynolds, TSC News. National Dance Day is a day that promotes dance education and physical fitness across the United States and encourages the nation, young and old, to move. Individuals, families, organizations, and communities come together through their creative expression in dance. It was created by Nigel Lithgow, executive producer of So You Think You Can Dance television series, and was introduced by Congresswoman Eleanor Holmes Norton, longtime supporter of healthy lifestyles. People dance at six flag locations, and right behind me, members of the Lakeland Community Theater are practicing the advanced routine. I participated, um, well, one, because I was asked to, and because I love dancing, and I think it's a um, big part of expressing yourself and getting yourself out there and getting active. It gives people a chance to really express themselves. My favorite thing about National Dance Day was being able to dance and being able to be with friends and people that I know. It's a movement to get people dancing and healthy and get some active lifestyle going on and I think that's really important with you know some of the health issues that are going on in the country and you know it's a great way to just get out and have fun with some friends and get some healthy action in. It's a fun way to work out and hang out with your friends. Like you can do so much through dance. We had about 20, 25 people that came out and danced with us today and I was just thrilled that that happened and they participated. So I'm looking forward to next year. If you miss this year's National Dance Day, don't forget the message. You can move, dance, and exercise any time of year. CR Lauren Brown, TSC News. So I'll put the Geiger counter here and then I'll measure the ambient temperature and I, oh, it's just you. You scared me. I'm about to start my ghost hunting session in a moment. What, oh, this? I decided to go old school. It says here that the best ghost hunters are prepared for anything. And it also says that ghost hunting originated in New York in 1848. And in a recent Gallup poll, 32% of Americans believe that ghosts exist. And I've definitely done my research. I've watched Ghostbusters a hundred times. And I've been taking notes on all the reality ghost hunting shows. And I've even interviewed a real life ghost hunter, Mark Sorrow, about his experiences. Well, the training is one that you do. It's kind of, it's, it's your self-discipline. It's, it's something you learn on your own. Uh, through lots of books, uh, working with more experienced investigators and groups. Um, it, it's, you never stop learning. I've been doing this for 15 plus years since I was 16 years old. And uh, every year I learn something new about a different piece of equipment, different technique, and a different theory. So it's, it's continually growing. 
The internet films and reality programs, along with the availability of high-tech equipment, is what's spurring amateurs into trying their hands at ghost hunting. Businesses selling ghost hunting equipment, those investigating paranormal activity, and get this, ghost counseling are all growing businesses. The number of people taking ghost tours has tripled in recent years. Savannah, Georgia is the U.S. city with the most ghost tours. They have over 31. My first experiences with ghosts, I was only five years old, and I lived in a house that used to be a funeral parlor. And in that house, it was very haunted. Lots of things would happen, and, and as I got older, became you know, a young adult and then a teenager, uh, I started reading lots of books. As soon as I got my driver's license, I was out looking for the urban legends and the haunted places, and it kind of started from there. I hear you. Where'd you go, little ghosty ghosty ghost? Oh, the temperature's dropping so quickly. It's a ghost. I know it. Yes! Anyone else here want to talk to us? Tell us what is your name? Bob. Bob, uh, why are you here? What's your message? I didn't understand. We didn't understand you. Say it again. The ghost is here. I know it. Thanks to all the tips from the ghost hunters. <gasps> ah! I found the ghost! Oops. Sorry. Hunter Cowper, TSC News. Each year, Polk County Schools hold a special day when parents, volunteers, and community members can come to our school and educate and inspire students. This event is called the Great American Teach-In. On Wednesday, November 16th, some guest speakers came in to share their careers and hobbies with our students and staff. I always enjoy coming here because the students are always well received and they're always happy to see us and of course they know they're getting ice cream. <laughs> So um, I always feel good about coming and talking to the students and they always have so many good questions about Publix and always so many good compliments about how much they love our ice cream. I remember when I was your age I had really no idea what I wanted to do. I think I knew I wanted to be a professional athlete and make a lot of money but I didn't, that in the end didn't really, wasn't realistic. So the opportunity to come here today and let the kids know what other opportunities are out there in the scope of all that there is to do in life, I thought it was important to let them know that facility management is another option that I certainly didn't know about at their age and wanted to introduce them to the opportunity. I believe it's good to be able to come out, let people know what we actually do on the streets to show how we can help people and if they need anything, they're, we're ready to, for them to call us and we'll be there for them. I like doing it. I have kids of my own and uh, it's fun to be able to share you know, something that I love and I'm passionate about and to get other people excited about engineering. Students learned how Publix makes and markets their own ice cream line, how police dogs are trained, and what it takes to put on a concert at the Lakeland Center. These speakers educated and inspired by showing demonstrations of what they use in the workplace. I think it's a good way to know about other people's jobs. i never seen a helicopter before and it was really cool to see one that close and to see it take off. How did the students react to, uh, when I told them about my job is I, I thought they were great. Uh, they asked a lot of questions, they asked a lot of good questions. Um, so I think that they, uh, by the end, they kind of knew what I did and, and, and I think they uh, focused a lot on the mascots and the bat boys and the fun things that you can do at the ballpark, especially at a younger age. I think it was hard for them to really relate to what I do because a lot of students aren't really involved in the banking industry or the current events with that. Um, you know, they're young, they don't have bank accounts yet. But I think it's still important for them to understand that these are all um, factors and issues that will be important to them once they start getting their first paycheck and start collecting an income, you know, where they're going to put their money and, you know, the information that goes into banking. I think most have enjoyed it. They had a lot of questions um, because uh, pretty interesting things. Uh, so they wanted to know a little bit more. And so they're very enthusiastic. District organizers hope the annual teaching will inspire students to work hard and stay in school. I love my job. I can't imagine doing something else. And uh, if if coming here and speaking today gives someone else that that opportunity, then it, it's it's all worth it. Lake Gibson would also like to thank all the guest speakers that came in and shared their careers with us. Hunter Cowper, TSC News.